Making a map editor can seem like a pretty daunting task from the outside, but it's a lot easier once you know how to do it. So in this tutorial, I want to show you how to make a tile-based map editor using nothing but pixel images. By the end of the tutorial, all you'll have to do to make a level is draw on an image like this. So if we open up the Unity Hub, we can just go to New, 3D, and name it. And I'm just going to call it Level Editor. Press Create. So now inside of Unity, I'm just going to create a new folder, name it Scripts, and now we're ready to start. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new c -start script and just call it Map Generator. And open it up in Visual Studio. I'm going to delete everything inside of it, or both these functions. Right now, all we need is the map that we're going to be, to be generating from. The second thing we need are the pixels on the map and what they align to. So should black represent a wall or should it represent a floor? Should rep red represent an enemy or maybe it should also be a floor? For that, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new c -sharp script and call it map pixel and open it up in Visual Studio. In this script, we're also going to delete both these functions and mono behavior as well. Then above the script, I'm going to put system.serializable. This will make Unity recognize that it's not meant to be a script, but rather just to hold information. In this case, we want our map pixel to hold the color of the pixel and what game object it should spawn if the map matches that pixel. And then back in our map generator class, I can go public map pixel pixels. Now that we have that set up, I'm going to go ahead and make a map. I'm using paint.net, but it doesn't matter which program you use. For my example, I want to make a platformer like Mario, so I'm going to go ahead and use black to represent the bricks, which I'll use to draw in the floor, and a couple of things for the, that the player is going to have to jump over. Now I'm going to go ahead and save this inside of our Unity project. I'm just going to call it Cool Map. Now by default, inside of Unity, Unity wants to compress the image to make it as optimized as possible. But that's not what we want because it's a pixel image. We want to be able to see each individual pixel. And so to stop Unity from doing that, we want to turn compression to none and filter mode to point and press apply. Now when our image is used in the game, it'll show every pixel as it should. But there's one more thing we're going to have to do. In order to read the image, which is what we're going to have to do to know which pixels are where, we need to go ahead and check Read and Write Enabled in the Import Settings. Now that we have the map all set up, I'm going to go ahead and in this scene, create a new empty object, reset its transform, and I'm just going to call this Map Generator. Then I'm going to go to Scripts and drag in our Map Generator class. Then in our map, in our map variable, I can go ahead and place our map. Now under Pixels, I can go ahead and define that right now there's only one pixel in the map, which is black. Uh, or, or I should clarify, there's white as well, but any color that isn't defined in our pixels array here will never end up getting red, which means we can use white to represent nothing. To tell black that it needs to generate a brick, I'm going to make the size 1. And here I can go ahead and say what it is. This alpha value does matter, so whenever you're creating a new one, always set the alpha to 255. So this is perfect. We now have a black pixel that will do things. However, we don't actually have a visual for what will spawn in with the black pixel. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new 3D object, cube, and I'm going to call this brick, and then save it as a prefab. This will serve as a good test object for our editor. Now inside of map generator, I'm just going to drag brick in. We now know that black should spawn something, and now we also know that black should specifically spawn a brick, but we need to actually tell it to do that in the code. So back in the map generator class, I'm going to add a function called generate map. And it matters that it's a public function, I'll tell you why later. So inside of this function, I'm going to first find the width of the image that we're dealing with. So I'll go int width is equal to map.width, and then int height is equal to map.height.
Then we need to go through each pixel on the entire map. Now in order to do that, I'm going to use a for loop. For int x equals 0, x is less than width, x plus plus. And what this will do is this will make so we start at 0 and it'll loop through every pixel on the x. But since this is a two-dimensional image, we also need to do the y. So for int y equals 0, y is less than height, y plus plus. And, we'll, and, I'll, and I'll comment this as search through every pixel in the image. Now inside of our loops here, I can go ahead and grab the pixel that is at this spot. So I can go color pixel is equal to map.getPixel x, y. So this is the pixel that is at this location. Then we can go through, we can do a for each loop, and we can tell it to search through every pixel. So map pixel, map pixel, in pixels. And then we can tell our editor if pixel is equal to max map pixel dot pixel, then to spawn in the object, which would be instantiate map pixel dot thing. In this case, we need to enter in the position of where our object is going to spawn. New vector three, x, y. And after that, we can do quaternion dot identity. which is great, but currently this isn't being called anywhere. So I actually want to create a new C-sharp script and call this map generator editor. And all the script will do is make, so a little generate button will appear under our map generator script in the inspector. So in the map generator editor, we're going to be using unity editor. And above class, we want to put custom editor type of map generator and then change from a mono behavior to an editor. Now we can delete the functions and put public override void on inspector GUI. We want to replace this with draw default inspector because we want the de we want this stuff to still appear in the inspector. And then we want to first grab the script that we're going to be working with. So map generator script is equal to map generator target. And then we want to go if GUI layout dot button generate script dot generate map. And this is why we had our generate map function public so that it could be accessed by this script. Now, if we go back into Unity, you can see we have a generate button. And when we press generate, boom, we have a map. We have a map identical to the picture that we just made. One problem with this though is all these objects are laying around everywhere, which we don't want that. We want them to be nice and organized. So. An easy way to do that is in our map generator script. We can create a new game object called uh, the container. We'll just call this new game object map. And then whenever we're instantiating a map, we can then tell it to be a child of container.transform. And so now that'll make that whenever we go to map generator and press generate, It'll do the same thing now instead of a neat and handy sort of map object. So where you can collapse everything and not have it take up all of the screen. Now I would like to note that this might not work for a large scale game involving hundreds of tiles because having each tile be its own individual game object is not the best way to do things. But I think it was important to do it this way so that you would have a clear understanding of how a map editor like this would be made. And so if I delete this map object and I go into my texture here, I can I can draw an arc, for example, and save, and then go back into Unity, and when I press Generate, it'll show the updated changes. So now making maps inside of any tile-based game would be, extremely, would be extremely easy. And adding new pixels to this map is easy as well. So maybe I want coins in my game. So I'm going to create a new 3D object, Cylinder. And I'm going to create a new 
material, just name it gold, set it to be yellow, and add it onto the cylinder. And add this, I'll name it coin, to my assets. And so now back in the map, I'll get rid of this, I can add yellow here, like coins that the player would have to get. If I look, I can see that the R is 255, G is 216, and B is zero. So inside the map generator, I can set this size instead of one, set it to two. And so now on the second pixel, I can go, I can go 255, 216, zero, and set the thing to be coin. And so now if I delete the map and regenerate it, you notice that I now have coins there. So that was it for a really easy map editor. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope to do more of these in the future. Thanks for watching.